And so the last event of these games is over. The time is 11 minutes to 8. You're watching Olympic breakfast time. Dave Moorcroft has been watching that marathon with rapt interest. Memorable marathon. It was, wasn't it? I mean, Charlie was great hanging on for so long. They ran in the hottest part of the day. His preparation has been a nightmare for the last year. And yet he showed all his courage there to hang on for so long. And it, I mean, it was an amazing battle at the, at the front, wasn't it? With a mile to go, you thought Sada had got it and the way in which the Italian came back and Wakiura. No, it's a great battle. And it's one of the few races, certainly the long-distance races, where those that did well in the World Championships also did well in the Olympics. And everything else, it's been an almost complete reversal of form. What we saw there, was that really an illustration of, of how the front-running African ambition can, can go wrong? It's, it's been such a joy to watch in the other events. Yeah. Well, they were both quite patient, really. And Sala waited until quite close to the end before he made his break. He didn't go too early. Akanga was doing most of the running. And when he went, it looked decisive. And, and it looked, if anybody was going to get him, it was Wakiuri. But when, Waki, when Borden caught the Kenyan, that gave him the inspiration then to go on and, and try and get uh, Sala. And of course, once he was caught, he completely folded. So, I mean, there was so much action in that last mile and a half. It, uh, it, it was, it's one of the most sort of fascinating and, and changeable marathons we've, we've seen for a long, long time. Not necessarily a, a very fast one, but as I said, it was in the heat of the day, mm. uh, which didn't go in the Europeans' favour. And in that sense, I guess it makes Borden's win that, more, um, no, that, more, not that much more of an achievement. Sala, you were glad to see finishing the medals, weren't you? Yeah, it was nice for him, wasn't it? I mean, Djibouti had never won a medal before, and uh, he'd done a lot of the running, and um, you know, I'm sure he felt, with a mile and a half to go, that he'd done the work necessary to win the gold. But in the end, he was grateful to win a, a medal because um, the Japanese runner uh, was, was catching him. Mm -hmm. What is behind the, the African domination, the, really the resurgence? We're seeing a new generation of African middle distance and long distance runners, aren't we? Yeah, they've always been very, very talented, but in, in the 70s, they, they possibly lost their way slightly by maybe running in America. A lot of them went to, on scholarships to the States, ran a lot of road races, ran a lot of college races, and, and weren't at their peak in the championships. But now they seem to have got it right, and um, maybe it's us that's got it wrong, because a lot of, a lot of the ones that, that, that ran well this week have been those that haven't done much all season, that have kept themselves quiet, and they've come up and, and they've produced the goods when it really mattered. Um, having said that, the two guys in the steeplechase have been racing around Europe as if you know, every other day, and yet they still manage to produce the goods. I mean, basically, the reason they've done so well is that they're better runners at the moment. Mm. And, uh, and not only are they better runners, but they've also proved themselves to be very good competitors, and they've got all the ingredients together now.